Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my dear colleagues, Nikos, Gabi, and Anwar, it is for me both a distinct pleasure and a great honor to welcome you to Cyprus, to my birth city and hometown of, of Paphos, a special place to me, made even more special today, hosting uh, very close friends. It is no exaggeration to say that your presence, our gathering in this uh, stunning backdrop of the Mediterranean Sea, is of a symbolic importance. An extended meeting between uh, like-minded countries of the wider region following the historic normalization agreement between UAE and Israel is seen and of itself a message. It signifies the new era of uh, new era our region has entered, driven by a common vision our countries and other countries of the region share. One of the wider Eastern Mediterranean, Middle East, and Gulf as an area of stability, prosperity, and peace through cooperation. This is a path that countries of the region have paved together step by step over the last uh, few years, and one that we shall continue to work together. Our meeting exemplifies our commitment to continue fostering a frank dialogue and understanding, and has provided us with the opportunity to discuss and formulate common approaches and messages that we will jointly convey. The evolving web of regional cooperation that is going from strength to strength in, uh, in our region is creating a new narrative. One that is cracking the glass ceiling of the prevailing restrictive narrative of our neighborhood as a region of turmoil, conflict, and crisis. The new narrative unfolding is one that is <laughs> radically different and it is written by like-minded countries with an exclusively positive agenda that is inclusive directed against no other country coming together to promote this vision of cooperation, peace, stability, and prosperity. Regional cooperation is yielding tangible results in an array of fields from energy to defense, security, science and innovation, environment and education. The pinnacle of this regional tide of cooperation and synergies is the historic agreements for normalization of relations between Israel and the UAE. We congratulate both Israel and the United Arab Emirates and other countries involved for this historic step that is opening a new chapter in our corner of the world. The destiny of this region cannot be left in the hands of countries outside the region, but rather it must, it must and will be dictated by the countries themselves. As cooperation is further enhanced, we see a path to institutionalizing this cooperation in a regional forum for cooperation and security, always based <coughs> on a positive agenda. Let me be absolutely clear. The path is open for all countries of the region to join us. This is, in fact, our aspiration. The sole condition is respect of good neighborly relations, respect of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries, and <clears throat> adherence to the basic norms of international law, including UNCLOS, and of course, peaceful resolution of disputes. And so, our message today, while the region and the world is facing this unprecedented crisis brought about by the pandemic, is that resolving problems can only come about through dialogue, adhering to the rules that keep the international system together, respect for international law, and multilateralism. In this framework, with my dear friends Nikos, Gabi, and Anwar, we discuss extensively the situation in Libya, Syria, Yemen, the JCPOA, the situation in Afghanistan, as well as the spillover dynamics from the region of the Middle East to Africa. We also discuss sectoral cooperation and specific projects we commit to take forward from energy to uh, cooperation on civil protection, genetics and molecular medicine, education, and of course enhancing people-to-people -people contacts. 
I also had the, the opportunity to brief my dear colleagues on the latest development on the, on the Cyprus problem. We go to Geneva at the end of the, of the month, steadfastly committed to the resuming of negotiations for reunifying Cyprus in a bizonal, bicommunal federation with political equality, full in line with the UN Security Council resolutions, international and European Union law. We and the international community expect the same of all other actors involved. We all agree that a reunified Cyprus must be a functional, viable sovereign state with no foreign interference and anachronistic systems that have no place in the 21st century. My dearest colleagues, there is a wind of change blowing from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea and then Gulf. Cyprus, from prehistoric times to today, embraces its fate as a bridge between the Middle East, Europe, Africa, and Asia. And we are determined that our geographical position, our excellent relation with all neighboring countries, is a blessing. The future of this region is one of cooperation, not conflict. It is one of prosperity, peace, and stability. We will continue walking this chosen path with like-minded countries, and our aspiration is that collaboration will continue to converge, including all countries of the region. Welcome you once again to Paphos, my dearest friends. Nikos. <coughs> My, my dear colleagues, uh, I'm really very happy to be here today for our first quadrilateral meeting. As I have repeatedly stated, it was always, and it is always a joy for me to be in Cyprus. And of course, the greatest of pleasures to meet and exchange views with close friends and trusted partners such as Cyprus, Israel, and the United Arab Emirates. A partnership that comprises both Israel and the United Arab Emirates is very important for the regional stability. We also welcome other regional initiatives undertaken with the aim of regional peace, such as the Al Ula Accords, as well as the Saudi initiative that aims at bringing an end to the conflict in Yemen. But what unites us as well is a common commitment to basic principles and values, such as promoting good neighborhood relations and the peaceful resolution of disputes on the basis of international law principles, such as the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea. Today we discuss the significant prospects for furthering our cooperation on a big number of areas, starting from the energy sector. In this context, we underline the importance of the East Med gas pipeline and renewable energy sources. We also addressed how we can enhance our exchange on issues such as digital innovation, tourism, climate, defense, and on addressing the pandemic and preparing for the post-pandemic world. As I have repeatedly said, our cooperation schemes are open to all, provided <coughs> that they serve our respect for the values and the principles I just highlighted. <clears throat> Today, we also had the opportunity to exchange views on areas of common concern, such as developments in the Eastern Mediterranean, Libya, Syria, and Yemen. In this context, I had the opportunity to inform my colleagues about my recent visits to Libya over the past few days. In view of the elections that are scheduled to take place in December, one fundamental precondition is the withdrawal of all foreign forces present on the ground in Libya, a position all of us fully share and support. It was also pointed that any arrangements that are contrary to basic principles of international law are not valid. I also addressed the meetings I had yesterday in Ankara. In this context, I reiterated that each side 
has its own views, clearly manifested during the press conference many of you may have seen. However, I would also like to underline the commitment of the Greek government, led by Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, to seek a positive agenda in our bilateral relations with Turkey, starting with an economic and trade relations. The Greek side submitted during the Ankara meeting a series of proposals in that regard, and so did the Turkish side. I have also extended an invitation to my Turkish counterpart, Mevlut Cavusoglu, to visit Athens. Dear colleagues, Greece strives to build good neighborhood relations with all the countries in the region, without exception. Our meeting today provides further impetus in this respect. I wish to thank wholeheartedly my dear colleagues and friends for the prototypic discussions we had, and I particularly would like to thank my friend Nikos for his excellent hospitality here in beautiful Paphos. Thank you, Nikos, so much for the great opportunity to be here with you today. <clears throat> uh, my friend, uh, the Cypriot uh, Foreign Minister Nikos, thank you for uh, initiating this forum and for your uh, wonderful hospitality uh, to myself and to the uh, entire delegation. My friend, the Green uh, Foreign Minister Nikos Dandias, my uh, new friend, the diplomat advisor to the President of the United Arab Emirates, Dr. Anwar Gargash, Kalispera, Salam Alaikum, Ramadan Karim, and Shalom. We have just finished the first uh, meeting uh, of ministers of our four countries. Uh, we are close geographically and we share a similar view of the Middle East and its future. Today's meeting is one of the results of the change that have taken place in the Middle East over the past year. Thanks to a brave and bold decision by leaders, we have made history with this signing of the Abraham Accord. This change has shattered old myths and created a real opportunity <coughs> to change the face of the Middle East. And if you don't believe that, ask yourself if you could have seen this picture only just a year ago. This agreement proved that the road to peace requir required negotiation required talk. I call on more countries, as well as our Palestinian neighbors, to take advantage of the historic opportunity created and join the circle of peace. The meeting uh, we held today is the first real step to accept the, uh, expand the impact of the Abraham Accord with our uh, partners from the UAE, Greece, and Cyprus. This new and important four ways of partnership stretches really from the shore of the Arabian Gulf to the shore of Europe. It is based on the desire to build a better future to its member and to, to the entire region. It is also a clear vision of our common interests and the threat facing and challenging facing the region. We want the meeting today become a permanent framework that will also extend, extend to a working level. During our uh, meeting, we discussed a number of areas of co for cooperation, including the field of energy. We hope that this will uh, lead to an energy partnership between the Eastern Med and the Gulf. The opportunity and the potential are huge. In addition, with the crisis facing tourism due to uh, the corona pandemic, cooperation in this field is key success factor. Israel, Greece, Cyprus, UAE have built a framework to cooperating in dealing with emergencies, including fighting uh, fires. We would like to expand this and promote this uh, to the broader uh, region. We discussed many possibilities for building the prosperity and the stability of the region, yet we also took time to discuss challenges that Iran and Hezbollah and other extremists to the stability of the Middle East and to the regional peace. 
We will do whatever it takes to prevent this extremist to success, and definitely we will prevent this regime from having nuclear weapon. My friend, Foreign Minister, uh, today we began a new path for regional cooperation. I can assure you that Israel is committed to this process, and I invite you to, walk in, uh, to a walking level meeting in Israel as soon as possible. Together we can turn our vision of cooperation into reality that will improve the lives of all our citizens. Once again, thank you, my friend Nikos, for this invitation and initiative. I truly believe this meeting will bring many fruitful meetings in the future. Thank you all. I would, uh, I would like to thank uh, His Excellency uh, Nikos Christodoulos, uh, the Foreign Minister of the uh, the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Cyprus, for hosting this quadrilateral meeting. I would also like to thank His Excellency, the Foreign Minister of the Hellenic Republic, uh, and His Excellency, the Foreign Minister of Israel, for our fruitful and constructive discussions today. Our meeting today was an opportunity to exchange views on the high-level cooperation between our countries in achieving regional stability and ensuring security and econ economic development in the wider region. We also discussed our shared visions for future cooperation and joint understanding of regional issues, including the energy security in the, in the region and the fight against COVID-19. The UAE believes that the regular holding of these conversations and consultations solidifies the relations between our nations. Through such dialogue, we are able to gain a deeper level of joint understanding and higher levels of cooperation in addressing the various challenges facing our region. We share today our visions on future cooperation and explored new avenues to expand our relationship in various sectors, including trade, investment, manufacturing, technology, science, health services, and food products. The UAE is seeking an ambitious and positive agenda in the region, and the Abrahamic Accords were mainly driven by the necessity of an alternative strategic view of the region based on stability, prosperity, and opportunity. The UAE shares with its friends and allies a common understanding of the need to engage in joint efforts to support regional stability and that the political solution is the only way to resolve and end the current crises in our region. We believe that we need to increase our constructive engagement in this regard and we renewed today our commitment to work closely together towards restoring stability in the region and advancing prosperity for its people. Our discussions today focused on ways to enhance joint action to face repercussions of COVID-19 and how to strengthen high-level cooperation in fighting the virus and protecting the health and well-being of our people. We explored the avenues of strengthening our cooperation in areas of using technologies to fight COVID, medical research, and the distribution of COVID vaccine. Once again, I would like to thank my counterparts, His Excellency the Foreign Minister of Cyprus, His Excellency the Foreign Minister of the Hellenic Republic, and His Excellency the Foreign Minister of Israel for our very, very constructive discussions today. I have strong confidence that we will continue on the path toward furthering our partnership through positive dialogue. Thank you. Thank you very much.